In this guide, I'm using terms like GCDs, OGCDs, weaving, openers, and ghosting. If unsure, I've also got a terms and language video, which I'll link to in the description. Basic single target rotation. The rotation leverages two big summons, Bahamut and Phoenix, which are your most powerful phases, and three lighter summons in between, cycling through Titan, Gruda, and Ifrit. Each of the lighter summons gives you a stack of right attacks, as well as favors granting further attacking spells. Additionally, it has two attacking OGCDs in Energy Drain and Fester. General Rotation Summon Bahamut, use six Astral Impulses while Bahamut is out, while weaving Bahamut's two OGCD abilities, Death Flare and Arc Morn. Summon your lighter summons one at a time using the full amount of Right and Favor abilities, e.g. all four of Titan Phasers, Topaz Rites and Mountain Busters. Cast Ruin 4 if you still have it, and then use Ruin 3 until Phoenix is ready. Then summon Phoenix using 6 Fountain of Fires while weaving in Phoenix's OGCDs Revelation and Rekindle. Then back to the same lighter summon phase, executed the same as before, leading back into the Bahamut summon with the cycle then being repeated. If any of that sounds complicated, don't worry, it is not. Many of the abilities are executed with the same button presses, automatically changing based on what phase you are in. E.g. Summon Bahamut is the same button as Summon Phoenix and their OGCDs are the same button presses. Ruin 4 Ruin 4 can be used at the start or end of the summon phase, or in between if you find yourself needing the instant cast mobility that it provides. Importantly though, never use it in the Bahamut or Phoenix phase as it will mean one less Astral Pulse or Fountain of Fire. Phoenix's Rekindle I'm sure the most pro gamer in the room could utilise this to heal another raid member, but the reality is that you're limited in when you can use it. There's no realistic expectation for you to utilise this in any other way than just randomly popping it on yourself when it's up. Scuffed Rotations If for whatever reason your rotation gets out of sync, e.g. you die, then use your Bahamut Phoenix Summon as soon as it's available, even if this means wasting your lighter summons. Bahamut and Phoenix are your most powerful phases and you don't want to delay them as this could mean less usage in the overall fight. Untargetable Boss if the boss is about to start a phase where they will become untargetable, then this is the only time where you might consider delaying Bahamut or Phoenix. The accurate answer here, and for the scuff rotation, is will delaying mean a loss in the amount of summons in the overall fight? But I appreciate not everyone watching this will be interested in min-maxing to this degree. As a minimum, you need to have enough uptime before the boss becomes untargetable with Bahamut to get out three Astral Impulses, weaving in both Arc Maul and Death Flare and the same goes for the Phoenix equivalents. If you can't fit these in, then I'd hold off summoning until after the boss becomes targetable, even though hitting Ruin 3 feels pretty darn weak. Lighter summoning order. Because of the general opener, I would suggest getting used to Titan, then Garuda, then Ifrit being the standard order of summoning. A fun aspect of this job though is adapting this order throughout the fights as you grow more comfortable with the job. Essentially, Ifrit is your most awkward phase for mobility. Not only does your Ruby Right have a long cast time, your Ifrit favor abilities include a dash to the boss and a melee attack. As you learn a fight better, you should pay attention to the boss mechanics, requiring lots of movement and where you are likely to be in your rotation. This may mean that at a certain point you'd change the lighter summon in order to have Garuda or Titan up instead of Ifrit for enhanced mobility. Conversely, if there's a perfect time to dash to the boss, for example, for a donut mechanic, then ordering to actually be in Ifrit phase at the right time might be the pro move. Right and Favours order. This doesn't apply to Titan as its Topaz Right and Mountain Buster Favours have to be executed in succession. But as with the summoning order, when optimising fights, Garuda and Ifrit's Favours can be executed in different orders. E.g. in Garuda phase you can use your Slipstream at any point before or in between or after the four Emerald Right casts. This can again aid mobility. E.g. if you go into Garuda phase just as you need to move, then save Slipstream for after the four Right casts or conversely, use it first if you have time before a mechanic will force you to move. Note, it's important to know that your Ifrit favours have to be used back to back, committing two GCDs. You can use them before, after or in between your two Ruby Right casts, but you can't use Crimson Cyclone, then Ruby Right, then Crimson Strike. Doing so will cause you to lose Crimson Strike. OGCDs Energy Drain is a damaging spell which grants the player two Aether Flow stacks and one stack of Ruin 4. The Aether Flow stacks are used to cast another OGCD, Fester. Energy Drain has a one min cooldown and you should be used as soon as it's available. You may occasionally want to hold back on using the Festers if you have a damage buff coming up, 
but most importantly you need to use them before energy drain becomes available again so not to waste them. Being OG CDs, you should be weaving both the festers and energy drains between your instant cast GCDs. Basically anything but Ruby Wright. Utility. Searing Light is your 2 minute raid buff which increases your group's damage output. Generally speaking, this will be used in your opener and then as soon as it becomes available again. Unless a boss is about to become untargetable, and if that's the case then it should be saved until the boss is targetable again. Radiant Aegis. Personal Shield. Basically use this to support your healers, e.g. a big raid wide is coming up in Savage, or if you've taken damage when you shouldn't have then a shield can help you survive the next attack. Don't worry if this is capped at 2 at points, no need to waste it for the sake of it, but don't forget how helpful it can be to keeping you alive in a pinch. Adil. 10% magic damage reduction and 5% physical damage reduction. Incredibly useful in higher end content and almost necessary to support the team if tackling savage content near release. Bosses like P3S hit very hard to the point where the team will wipe if no one is using damage reduction. Or even useful in a pinch if a team is struggling in a dungeon and the reduction could help mitigate the next raid wide. In high end content it is often helpful to discuss when each team member will use theirs. Ghosting. Never weave OGCDs directly after summoning Bahamut or Phoenix. The reason being is because your OGCD can end up cancelling the pet's first ability. For example, Bahamut may not cast his first worm wave. So for the same example with Bahamut, always summon and then start to weave upon casting the first astral impulse. Also avoid summoning Bahamut or Phoenix directly after using Searing Light or Radiant Aegis as it can potentially cause Carbuncle to disappear before it's used the ability. Titan, Ifrit and Garuda summons are not impacted by this as the issue is with pets which they are technically not. General opener goes as follows. Precast Ruin 3 before the pull at 2 seconds. Then cast Searing Light into Ruin 3, into Summon Bahamut, into the first Astral Pulse plus using your pot, second Astral Pulse plus Energy Drain, third Astral Pulse plus Arc Morn and Fester, fourth Astral Pulse plus Death Flare and the second Fester, fifth Astral Pulse, sixth Astral Pulse, Summon Titan, Topaz Rites plus Mountain Busters times four, Summon Garuda plus Swift Cast, and then finally Slipstream. Notes: Openers are generally designed around alignment to pot and raid buff windows. The second Ruin 3 in the opener feels a bit weird and even sometimes clips. This is there to ensure that Searing Light is not ghosted and is the accepted standard. The Garuda Slipstream is swift casted to ensure that it is inside the pot buff window. You generally wouldn't use swift cast on this elsewhere. If you have horrendous ping and can't double weave two OGCDs, then I suggest moving the Festers back to the 5th and 6th Astral Pulses. An alternative opener is summoning Garuda first, then Titan, again swift casting out Slipstream to fit inside the group's 15 second raid buffs. This can be a DPS gain if your raid group is very heavy in 15 second raid buff abilities. Swift cast. Post the opener is best saved to be used with Ruby Wright for more movement in the Ifrit phase, or in prog groups you might prefer to save for Resurrections. AoE. The AoE rotation in general is the same as the single target in terms of summon rotation, however you are just subbing the single target spells, the rites, and astral impulse fountain of fires, any drain and festers with their AoE equivalents. For example, Topaz Catastrophe instead of Topaz Rite. The only point of note is that Ruin 4 should be prioritised over rites and favours as is a DPS gain in AoE situations. Gear and Stats the key for summoners is to have between 2.46 and 2.48 spell speed. This is so you can cast 6 Astral Impulses or Fountain of Fires during your big summon phases. You can see your current spell speed in your ability tooltips. This means having a minimum of 474 spell speed for 2.48 or 590 for 2.46, noting that you want to limit going over 590 as much as possible. I'm currently maintaining 2.46 to make extra sure I don't drop an Astral Pulse. With the desired spell speed, the secondary stat priority for gear and materia is currently critical hit, then determination, then direct hit. Summoner gear will always leverage intelligence as the primary stat. Links to best in slot option builds in the description, but roughly speaking you're looking to get the weapon, head, chest, hands, neck and ring from Savage. The rest from upgraded tombstone gear using a small amount of spell speed materia to adjust to your desired outcome. Occasionally, individual fights might benefit from going all out on spell speed, but this is not only fight dependent, but also dependent on your raid group's kill speeds of said fight. 
I'm not going to delve into it given how niche a topic, but further info can again be found on the Balance Discord. Happy summoning! Like and subscribe to complete the duty.